I would figure out my story. Your story has so much power. Your story is it's your story and no one else is going to have your story. Your story will connect, especially if you tell it straight from the heart, master it in a way though, that it's not a long story. It's got to be something that you can, you know, get your message across quickly, master your story. That would be number one. I would make a list of my, what I call my board of directors. So these are my people who, with, if I'm starting a network marketing business, traditional business, writing a book, who are those 12 people, 12 to 24 people who are sharp, they're ambitious, they're driven, they can build this better than I can. They are incredible people who I have a relationship with. I want to say that again, who I have a relationship with. Because there's amazing, like I could line up an incredible board of director team, but if I don't know them, for me to just reach out and pitch them something, no, I want to, I want the board of directors, the people who I know, I trust, I've built a relationship with, those 12 to 24 people are people I'm going to just, I, because I have a relationship with them, I'm just going to reach out to them, hey, Candace, this may or may not be for you, but I have something, and this is what's happened for me, and can I just share it with you? You have full permission, if it's not for you, to close up, but I was working on the board of directors, people who I admire, who I look up to, who I trust. You are one of those people, and I would just love it if you look at it. Again, may not be for you, but you may know someone who it could be a fit for, and I just respect you. And then I'd set up an appointment. Again, because we have that relationship and that trust, most people will give you 15, 30 minutes, if you will, right? So I would do that. So I work on my story. I'd have my board of directors, and I'd start sharing it with them. And my third thing I would do. And this is more of a training point for I want people to realize with the board of directors, because everyone will either become a they'll either become a customer of yours, they'll become a distributor, a partner, whatever you want to call it. Or if you build your business the right way, they will become a referral source for you. Right. So they may never join you, but they might be someone who knows someone who will. Right. So that's why you want to go in with the approach of respect that person. Uh, the third thing I would do, 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 I'd get busy. I'd start carving up time in my schedule. I'd be like, okay, what do I want to accomplish? How much time? I'd be consistent and I'd just get to work. Welcome to Gratitude Geek, the relationship marketing podcast for micropreneurs building genuine, lasting relationships with clients, colleagues, and community. I'm your host, Candice Rodardi, and today I'm joined by one of my favorite people in the whole world, the incomparable Phoebe Trotman. Phoebe is the author of the Never Quit on a Bad Day book series. She is a Vancouver-based entrepreneur and accomplished soccer player. She has achieved many accolades as a soccer player, including being inducted into several sports hall of fame, winning championship titles, and being recognized as an exceptional athlete. Phoebe has also excelled in her career as a network marketer, earning top awards and recognition within her company. She is passionate about personal growth and empowering others to reach their full potential. Welcome to my friend and mentor, Phoebe Trotman. Oh my gosh, Candice. I have been excited about this conversation since we first mentioned it and put it on the calendar. So you are equally one of my most favorite people. So I'm just grateful and honored and so thankful to be here today with you. Yay. Okay. So tell us your story. How did you get to where you are today? Oh, you know what story? It's It's been a journey. It's been a journey. So, I mean, I started playing soccer since I was five years old and started on an all boys team. I was the only little girl. I was on the only person of color. And, uh, but it, it was an experience. I mean, I just wanted to play this game because I had an older brother who played and I fell in love with the sport and I continued on through playing in university. Then I played um, se semi-professional soccer as well too. And soccer is just a passion of mine and I love it. And I, it, you know, it kind of, it taught me so many life skills, which we can chat about in a minute. From there, I was working full time. I graduated from university. I was working full time at a computer company and uh, started a bunch of side projects. I was really uninspired at my job. I was, I was bored, you guys. Like I just, I wasn't learning. I wasn't growing. And so I started a bunch of side projects and literally in the pockets of my day, I would, I would, carve up time to work on those projects. And uh, then that was going really, really well. I had this long-term vision. Once my income and my side projects was enough, then I'd make that leap. And guess what? The leap happened sooner than I would have planned because the company went bankrupt. I was laid off. And uh, in that moment, I had to figure out what next. And I decided to go full-time in my network marketing company and lots of bumps in the road. And then here we are 17 years later. And so that's the short version of the story. We can unpack whatever part you'd like to. <laughs> okay. So there's a lot to unpack. Only girl, 
and only person of color on a boys soccer team. Correct. Talk about that. You know, it was for the one thing I was used to playing with boys because I have an older brother, I have older cousins. And so I was used to being, you know, the only little girl playing in in that boys environment, if you will. So that part was fine. I mean, they were really accepting at that point. I didn't have any issues that I re- can recall. And I think I would have, you know, remembered them if it was anything too substantial, because I do remember other environments I was in where being the only person of color, there were a lot of challenges with that, if you will. But the soccer team was fine. I think it was because I was I was good at playing. I loved playing. And so there was no reason, you know, I stood out anyways. And it was like, okay, well, I'm going to stand out because I'm going to be good and just enjoyed playing. And so from there, I transitioned into a girls team and, and uh, you know, the rest is, is history, if you will. Are boys rougher than girls on this, on the field or what is that at like? that age? Tip, yes, typically I coach soccer now. So I oversee a program under four to under seven. And, you know, there's, there's some girls who are be a little bit more rough and tough, if you will, but typically the boys are a little bit tougher, which I say like, you know, my brother, we fought a lot. So in terms of like play fighting and my older cousin, so I was tough. I came on and I, w- I was more of like a little tomboy and just like rough and tumble. And so that, that definitely helped being in a, in a boys environment for sure. You know, there are some sports where I'm like, mm, I don't know if a boy, boys and girls on the same team or would the dynamic would work. But soccer to me seems like one of those sports where it doesn't matter what your gender is to play. Like yeah. you could have a mixed team, even at the professional level that would be successful. Am I, you, am I wrong on that? It, you know what? Up until a certain age, like boys and girls definitely can play together. You don't notice, you know, too many differences, if you will. Um, and then you get to a certain age, you know, typically, I guess you're going to go puberty, if you will, like, and then start developing different ways and strength and different things. And so on a professional level, it would be interesting to see. I mean, I think there's going to be some, there's going to be some female players who would rock a male player at that professional level. And then there's going to be some, it's going to be the other way around. So that would actually be a very interesting league to have like a co Ed professional professional soccer league. I, I played co-ed in university years on another league, another team. And it was a blast. It really was because there's challenges in different ways when you're playing against a, a male player, if you will. Well, and people communicate on different levels too. So, you know, people, I, I, I've i seen musicians on the stage playing and you just get an, a look like the, the lead guitarist will just give a look, a side look, and then everybody will change the, the chord or something. Right. So, and, and I'm sure that that is the same in sports where all you need is a cue, like a visual cue from somebody and you know to change. But I think women and men communicate that way differently. But I, I mean, I, I'm not a, I'm not a sports person. I don't, I'm not an athlete. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I think on the field, it's all about your, you're communicating lots of ways through your body, like different, um, just like how you go in for a tag. Like you can tell when your teammates like fired up and like, let's go. So you can sense that as well. And then yes, obviously there's visual clues and then there's the verbal side as well too. I don't know if it's any different in terms of men and women. I think on the field, like at the end of the day, you're just communicating whatever way you need to get the point across to ultimately win the game. Well, anytime you're in a team environment, that's true. I mean, think you, I, I'm thinking about side glances with coworkers in team meetings when I was worked in corporate. You know? Absolutely. You do what you got to do to get the message across pretty much well, any way you need to. Or stepping in or, you know, stepping into a conversation when it's going too long or somebody's straying off path, you know, just making a correction with a verbal, you know, cue or something. So, yeah. It, okay. So let's take, let's talk about what you learned from playing soccer that you have translated into business because you're extremely successful in your business. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I, I really believe we can learn so much as uh, on the field and in, in this case for soccer and as athletes in general that help in terms of your professional life and just life skills in general, because as you just said, like you're in a team environment when you're talking about soccer, you're in a team environment, you're working with your teammates, you're working with your coach to accomplish just a particular goal. In that case, it might be winning that that one game. It might even be focusing on just that half. How can we win this half? And so it's a lot of um, focus, commitment, if you will, time management. You know, I talk about to university athletes, you have to manage your your career as an athlete and then your career as a student as well too. So definitely time management. How do you prioritize? Like what tasks do you need to do in this moment to get the result that you're looking for? Resilience. And, you know, we'll talk more about that too, but bouncing back after you face challenges right? Whether it's a challenge in terms of your own playing ability, you know, I say like I've had an incredibly successful career as an athlete, which I'm so grateful for. However, the only reason I was able to have some of those highlights that you talked about was because of the tough stuff, the not making the team, the sitting on the bench, the getting five minutes of playing time when I want to get, you know, a full 90, if you will, losing those tough games when sometimes 
you're losing a game. And it's not even about the loss of like, just, we didn't win because we didn't play our best. It's like, we didn't win because of a outside circumstance that can impact things as well too. And so there's so many things you have to work through as an athlete to create success. And it's the same thing when you are in your life environment, you know, how can you grow yourself so that when you have those bumps in the road, you're able to push through it because that's where that growth happens. That's where that magic happens. That's where you really develop and grow into the person you're meant to be. I love what you said about, it's about winning this last half or winning, you know, because you're, it's, it's even can be down, come down to how am I going to make this pass? How Mm -hmm. are we going to get this goal? You know, how are we going to get the next goal? How are we going to get the ball out of this end? I mean, I, I haven't played soccer since I was in third grade. So I'm no, but you're spot on. You're spot on. It's sometimes those little things. Like we have a saying in soccer, we call it say go hard for five. And pretty much what it means is like someone might call it and it's like, okay, five minutes, go hard for five minutes. We're just going to focus this next five minutes where we're going to work harder. We're going to uh, go in for every tackle. We're going to win every ball. We're going to hit our passes. We're just going to like, and usually it's one person who calls it. And then someone else will be like, go hard for five. And it, like, you just level up. And it's the same thing in when you're building a business. I talk about that in, in the network marketing world too with your team like can you go hard for five and that might be you know a stretch of a season right we're not talking just five minutes you know it might be a season that you're going for a promotion where everybody just does a little bit more and that's the same um, philosophy that we take from soccer into life right can you just level up it's do it at the gym right five minutes can you go hard for five where you just increase that level on the stairmaster or you know increase the level on the treadmill pick up a heavier weight and just push through it because again that's where that that stretch comes from where you really grow and you can start with one can you go hard for one if you can't do five can you start with one absolutely and five is just a saying right it's just the mentality of it but absolutely right you can break it down into one because it's really just like do one more can you do one more that's the go hard for five mentality just can you do a little bit more i I love this because i you i've heard you say go hard for five over the years many times and I forgot about it. Actually, I really did. I forgot about it. But my brain is like now thinking, how can I take this go hard for five and teach it to people? How do, how can I help my coaching clients with this go hard for five? And I have all these ideas in my head. Like, can we do a five minute where we all hop on Zoom for five minutes? And in that five minute time, we do one activity together that we're all working on together. And then at the end of the five minutes, we say what we did. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's it's that little bit. Like sometimes I think we naturally and myself included, we think like, okay, I've got to do all this. And it's like massive when we get like big goals and absolutely I'm a big believer in setting big goals. That being said, sometimes we just need to, let's dial it down a little bit because it's in those little fives that you do or ones as you say, whatever it is that you're going to get to those big goals. It's about doing the little, doing the little consistently and then stretching, right? It's just a thought process of do that little bit more, right? When we, for muscles, when you're trying to work your muscles, you have to push yourself. You have to do heavier. You have to go when you feel like you're exhausted and you want to stop, do that one more. Cause that's again, where that growth comes from. I love it. All right. I think I've asked you all the questions about soccer. Now let's talk about your book. Sure. I love the title of your book, Never Quit on a Hard Day. And bad day, bad day. Never, bad day, quit, on never bad quit on a bad day. And I, I mean, think, hard is true too, because the bad days are usually but, hard. So I think, I think you stole that title from somebody. <laughs> Did you, you know, get permission to use it? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> I know what you're saying. Actually, that saying has been around for a while, if you will. Like it is actually um, a saying that is a powerful saying. It's something that I just encourage people to live by because we're going to have hard days. We're going to have those bad days. And if you just can push through that, again, it's the same idea as we just talked about with Go Hard for Five. If you can push through that and just get to the other side of that bad day, season, time period, growth is on that other side. Success is on that other side. So um, yeah, it, uh, I was impressed that it was available. That was kind of my open the door, close the door God moment. I was like, okay, I like I knew the concept of the book. I wanted to share inspiring stories of resilience and really highlight some of the stuff that people go go through and have gone through to kind of get to where they are now and how did they do it. And then in terms of the title, I remember hearing that saying, and I was like, oh, I wonder if the domain name's available. And I always say, I do this, like open the door, close the door thing with God, where I was like, okay, if you want me to move forward in this way, the domain name will be available. 
if the domain name isn't available, then okay, this isn't the, this isn't supposed to be the title. This isn't supposed to be the message. And then I was actually blown away that it was available. And so here we are. Yeah. Never quit on a bad day. Inspiring stories of resilience. I love it. So talk to me about the, the collection of people that have shared their story and what the book ultimately, who the book is ultimately for. Sure, absolutely. So this edition of this particular book is Thriving Entrepreneurs Edition. And so I've asked a series of entrepreneurs or a group of entrepreneurs who have had, they've been mentors, they've been colleagues, dear friends of mine who I just know have incredible stories. And I've been in, inspired by them. And I asked them if they would be open to sharing a story. And so it's an incredible lineup of very successful entrepreneurs in the network marketing space, direct sales, online uh, marketing, you know, coaching, like it's, it's kind of a, an entrepreneur book, if you will. That being said, what's so interesting about it is the stories are so different. They're not all about an entrepreneur. It's not necessarily like, okay, I had a goal in my business and went after it and this happened. There are a couple of stories that talk about business and challenges that I've had, but really it's just... I asked the the contributors, you know, what's one like a time where you wanted to quit, whether it was your business, a goal, a dream, like just what, what does that mean to you? And so it's really a book for anyone who's ever had a dream or a goal and has felt discouraged or has felt frustrated in pursuit of that goal and, and dream. Or even for someone who maybe you are on top right now and things are great, you know that there's going to be bumps in the road. Like this is life. There's going to be obstacles. There's going to be setbacks when you're pursuing something. And this is the book for people who want to to kind of have a little, uh, some tools in their toolkit so that when those bumps hit, they know how to push through them. They have another idea or strategy or tip or way to move forward in through, through that obstacle, if you will. So one of the best things that my husband and I did in our business many, many years ago was we fired our best customer. So sometimes quitting leads you on a different path that's better. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about choose, when to choose to quit. Absolutely. And there is a chapter in there because I can hear people when they hear the title, never quit on a bad day right away. It's like, well, wait, what? I, I never quit. No, that's not what we're saying. As you just shared, Candace, there are times when you want to quit or transition into something else, move forward. And so I talk about that a little bit because first of all, quitting something, if you will, it, the whole concept never quit on a bad day means don't quit on a bad day. Quit If you're going to quit something, quit on a good day. And what I mean by that is oftentimes we quit when we're frustrated, we're angry, we're disappointed, we're disheartened. It's all these negative emotions. And then we're like, I'm done with this. And you just leave it blind and move forward. That's not necessarily the best time to quit something. When I say you're going to quit some, quit it on a good day in the sense of push through that negative emotion, get to the other side of that. And then you might have to evaluate. You might have to look at it and go, okay, you know, different things to consider. Is this, is this it aligned with my values? Is this aligned with my values and beliefs? Because if it isn't, it might be time to transition and move forward into something else. Is it, you know, did you hit all the, everything you set out to do when you first decided to pursue this? And if you did, and you're not growing or learning anymore, maybe it might be time to transition into something else. If it's not serving your lifestyle in terms of a lifestyle choice, and it doesn't align maybe it might be time to if it's causing significant fresh anxiety frustration like you have to evaluate your comfort zone versus actual mental health but if it's something that isn't helping you then it might be time so there are times that you just shared with you know firing your best client there was probably a series of reasons behind that if you will and it wasn't a matter of you just, okay, we're done. It's like, well, hold on a second. If we want to get here, and this is what I always challenge people to do is think about where do you want to go in your, your future, if you will. If you want to get to a certain place, is the thing that you're doing right now helping you get closer to it? Because if it isn't, then you might need to sit there and do it again with the clarity, with the peace. You know, I talk about when I retired from professional soccer, I didn't do it after a bad game or a bad season. It was actually a time where I just realized I had other priorities, other things that I wanted to focus on in my life. I knew I'd still play soccer just in a different level and different environment so that I had the time to pursue other things that were important to me going forward and looking forward to my future. Exactly. And when we fired this, this is a, actually, I'd, I'd forgotten about this part of the story. And it's actually a really important point. We had been talking about it and we were on, we went on vacation. So the a series of circumstances happened before we went on vacation and we're on vacation. And my husband and I are in the front seat and our seven-year-old daughter's in the back seat. She probably was asleep. And we were talking it through and we were on this long drive um, in Michigan. We were on vacation in Michigan and we lived in Texas at the time. And it was a, we were, I think we were going to be in the car for three hours and we, about an hour into the drive, we made the decision. And so we pulled over, 
We crafted an email on a phone. I think my husband actually did the email on his phone, sent the email, got back in the car and kept driving. And it was just like, we never thought we never looked back. We didn't look back. Okay. with it. So let me ask you this. Were you guys in like, it sounds like you were, but just curious, like, were you guys in a state of calmness? Were you guys like, we were enjoying our vacation. Exactly. Right. Cause you've got a sense of like, okay, hold on a second. Does this really, is this working for us? And again, not in that negative place, but in that place where you're like, okay, we're in a, we're in a peaceful place. If you will, you're on vacation, you're discussing stuff and you're just like, hold on, this isn't, this isn't letting me get to where we need to go. So maybe it is time. And sometimes it's relationships, right? In this case, it's a business relationship. It might be a friendship. It might be a romantic relationship. It's like really just, again, taking the time to do it when you're in a place of contentment, if you will, or almost just in a place of where you're sort of neutral around the situation. You're not, you're not in the negative. You might not be super overjoyed, but you're just kind of in a neutral and then really evaluate it. And then you make that decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we, and we were very, we were in a very peaceful, calm, we had been, our, our rental car had been upgraded to a luxury vehicle. So Ooh, we were driving nice. a really nice car. I mean, we it just, we were just having a great vacation and we were having a lot of fun. It was just the three of us and it was the right time. And I mean, we literally, we were having a conversation and we said, okay, pulled over, made the email, went back on the road. You know, it was just, it was so peaceful. It was the right Love decision it. to make. Yeah. Never, never look back. And in fact, the following year, we made less income because she was our number one customer, but we are, you know, gross income, net income. So our gross income went down, but our net income went up. Mm. So it was like, okay, yeah, you know, we were, we were actually losing money by catering to this client. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And I'm sure a lot of mental, like, yes, from the, you lost, you know, money, but also that mental because sometimes, you know, when you're in that situation, it takes a lot of mental energy away from what you could be focusing on that might create something new or something exciting or something freeing, if you will. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes yeah. when you release and you step forward with that leap of faith, that trust, great things can happen in that space. Oh, yeah. So don't don't quit on a bad day. But when you know that it's the right choice to quit, give yourself permission to move on to the next thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's how we grow. That's how we, that's how we progress in life, right? There are going to, you have to transition, just transition forward to something else. Okay. So you've got three books right now in your series. You've got a workbook and two versions of the, of the, go ahead. Actually, two, Yeah, no. So two books. So we have never quit on a bad day, inspiring stories of resilience, the thriving entrepreneurs edition, which is available in color as well as in black and white. Well, so that's, that's sort so of like two. Yeah. Kind okay. of two that's books. what I meant. Same book. <laughs> different versions. If you like color, go for color because it's fun. It pops. And then there's black and white as well too. And then I also, yes, I have a workbook. So it's called Never Quit on a Bad Day, a guided workbook for creating good days. And that is exactly what it is. It's a workbook. It's all about dreaming bigger dreams. It's a chance for the reader to really reflect on their own journey and think forward into what do they want to create in their life as well. Uh, It is, I have absolutely no doubt that the workbook was probably the first idea for you. Because you are such an incredible trainer. I mean, you are always thinking of ways that you can support the people that you need to support. So you probably came up with the workbook before you came up with the inspiring stories. You know what? It's interesting because in the book, Inspiring Stories of Resilience, there is a workbook element. So thank you for those kind words. (laughs) My goal with stuff is I want people to leave with something that's going to help them on their journey, right? It's one thing, you know, sometimes you just, you share and share and share, but it's like, what can the person, the reader, the listener, the convention attendee, the workshop attendee, what can they take into their own life to help them? And so in the book, uh, the Inspiring Stories of Resilience, at the end of every chapter, there is a section called Reflections on Resilience, which is a one page activity for the reader. So you read the story, then you have the Reflections on Resilience that really challenges you to think in your your own life. And, and there's some questions you can answer. There's also a QR code because I like interactive stuff. And so there's a QR code that the reader can scan. It takes you a short video from that contributor that just, I, I asked the contributor to share what's on your heart. Like what's something you can share with the reader. And so the videos of encouragement are really short videos, literally of encouragement of different, you know, it might be an additional tip. It's a story. It's just a chance for you to see and, and get to know some of these fabulous people that are, that are in the book. It's probably 
near impossible to get this to happen, but wouldn't it be awesome if every single one of the contributors read their chapter for the audiobook I version? Know, I know. Like that is something that uh, it's funny because I've had a lot of people, is there an audiobook? And I'm like, well, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it'd be a lot more coordination to do that. However, you never know. You never know. It could yeah. happen. You could get a couple of them to read their chapter. It could yeah. be like bonus content. Yes, it could be absolutely. for those. And I like love that. that you have the video of each of the contributors. So yeah, people can it, read their story and then see their face. Absolutely. So one of the things, because again, I've been so fortunate. I've learned so much from these amazing people and I want people to hear their story. And so they do share a story. The video of encouragement is very different. Again, it's just a two minute. It's like some of them are tips. Some of them are just stuff to think about in another way. Some of them are personal development lessons. So it's very different than in some ways than the story. Uh, that being said, it, it was cool how it came out because I, again, I just asked the contributor, share what's on your heart. What's something you would want the reader to know and, and learn. And and so it's a chance for the reader really to have like kind of that moment to really connect with the person who shared their story. Yeah. Groovy. Okay. So let's talk about how, I mean, cause you, you were not an author. This was a totally do, new thing for you to, to do this book. <laughs> so talk about the marketing process, the marketing process of, of the book. Of yeah. 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 What did, how did, what, how did you spread the word about the, you know, did you have a team to help you? Did you hire a publicist? What'd you do? So here's the thing, it, and I'm so grateful because this whole, it's been such a learning and growing experience. Because as you said, I, I didn't have actually a vision to be an author and here we are. So um, it's interesting how things can happen and move very quickly. And now it's so much fun. And it's been really exciting. So really getting the word out there. I mean, it does come down to relationships first and foremost. So um, I'm super grateful that I have an incredible network of people who we've had a chance to connect over the years, who I've poured into them, they have poured into me. And so when the book was, was first going to be released, least I did have a small team of um, ARC readers, so advanced reader copies who I provided. And I asked people, I said, you know, I value your opinion, your thoughts. Would you be open to reading this book before it gets published? And so had a small team of people who were gracious enough who said, yes, absolutely. And so that was exciting to hear their feedback, which everyone, you know, again, I wanted, I said, I want you to be brutally honest. And they were really inspired by the book. And then I just kind of spread the word a lot through social media, through just, you know, sharing with people uh, that, hey, Hey, this is this is what I've been inspired to do, if you will, and I'm looking forward to getting it out there. And so, doing that, then friends with podcasts, you guided me in a way where you're like, hey, you know what, you should do, look at doing some podcasts. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. Thanks, Candice. You know, <laughs> and so I've been doing podcasts and just sharing and and again getting it out there. And then I was invited to speak at. Um, a friend's convention and so shared there and they had copies for they provide copies of the book to everyone who attended and so that was just a great exposure to let people read it and the reviews have been incredible I'm so, I'm so touched that people have been moved and been inspired and have enjoyed reading the book and have moved forward in it like some of the reviews where they they share how it helped them start thinking about their dreams again and that just means so much because I do feel like so many people have just lost the thought of dreaming. It's just kind of like, what are you excited about? And they're like, I don't, I don't know. And it's like, there should be something like what makes, brings you joy? Like, is it a hobby? Is it something you're working towards? Is it just something you like to do? And I think a lot of people have kind of moved away from that. And so that really helped, that touches my heart that people are starting to dream again and picking up new hobbies and doing new things that they're excited about that bring a smile to their face. And that's been some of the most incredible, the encouraging feedback that that I've received. I just realized something uh, about six months ago, I realized that I had lost my sparkle, mm. that there was something I like this, the thing that made me unique and wonderful and, you know, giddy. And it was, it was missing. Mm. Mm -hmm. And when I identified that my sparkle had disappeared, something that brought sparkle to me that made me sparkle again appeared. Love right. It. So if you identify that you, that you have lost your sparkle, which is, I mean, this is a conversation, this is along that conversation. If you identify it, you'll attract something that'll help. And I, okay. So I love that you have built this entire thing on your, on relationships. Cause truly your network is phenomenal. You have a phenomenal Thank network you. and you have, I mean, I've known you for over 10 years, maybe I think long time. Years. I yeah. know. And okay. I watch you. I have watched you do a couple of different things in your career. I've, I've watched you move out of one thing and into another. And, and everywhere you went, you just built a strong network. Mm -hmm. And people admire you and they trust you because you never say something that isn't honest and true at the time that you say it, right? I mean, think you can't, 
things that truths change, right? You can say, you know, 10 years ago, we could say X, Y, Z was true, but that's not true anymore because technology changes. But if you are honest and true in the moment that you're saying it, and that, and people, I don't know why I went down that train. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> but, but the train but, needed to go but, down. You were meant but, to go down it. Yeah. But, but the, you, you have always been that person and people admire you and they trust you and they enjoy being around you. And so because you've built that network, it doesn't matter what you do. People are going to support you. Thank you. So the true lesson, the true Phoebe Trotman lesson here is be honest, be approachable and be the type of person that people can look up to. Right. Which mm-hmm. is people, people look up to people they admire because they, uh, I, I think honesty is the thing, right. And genu- being genuine to who you are and Absolutely. resilience, resilience, resilience bleeding from the heart. Right. I think yeah. that's the biggest thing is just to like love on people wherever you are for the right reasons, just to connect with people for the right reasons. That's, exactly. the, that's the most important thing, right. It's about just building those relationships. And again, we're all busy and, you know, we have lots in the go, but let's take it back to the go hard for five, right. Who can you connect with today just for the sake of connecting with them, just to say like, Hey, you popped in my mind. What's up? How's life? It can be a video message. It can be a text. It can be a phone call. It can be a voice note. It can be a card. It can be a letter. It can be whatever. Yeah. Just how can you, pour into someone, right? At the end of the day, I think that's the part that all of us can do. We can all do that. We can all reach out to like, you know, whether it's five people or just one every day, just, Hey, what's up? Thinking about you. Just want to say hi. You are the person who taught me how those video messages can really impact somebody. I got a little video, I mean, 20 second (laughs) video message from you once and it totally made my day. And I was like, Oh, it didn't take her much to do that. She just hit record and sent a message. Mm-hmm. I could do that too. So, Absolutely. and you never know when you're, people model the desired behavior, right? That's a, a phrase that has been around for 30 years, model the desired behavior. So if you want people to spread gratitude and appreciation and love and make people feel good, do the things that make you feel good. Mm-hmm. So, okay, let's talk about resilience. Oh. I have so many things I want to talk to you about, but let's talk about resilience. Was there a a theme, like a thread through the stories that was so like, oh, this thing about this thing called resilience. There's this, there's this thread through all of these stories in this book and they all are leading to the resilient. Did you find that? Yes. And yes, in a way. So it was interesting because I think part of what I realized in connecting with these, all these incredible people, few things, number one, they had clarity in terms of what they wanted to create. They had clarity in the sense of they knew what they wanted in terms of a lifestyle, a goal, um, a target, if you will. And so they realized that even though they're going through a rough patch, they were able to focus on that, where they headed to pull them through, if you will, or push through it to move forward towards where they wanted to head. So that was another thing that's really important that I encourage everyone listening to do is find clarity that the workbook, um, is really all about that in terms of creating that dream day, if you will, will, because when you have clarity, then you, it allows you to refocus. Right. And I say like, for me, there's, a lighthouse on the cover of the workbook because I use it as a lighthouse in terms of those tough times. It's like, okay, where am I headed? Yes. Oh, this is frustrating. This isn't what I wanted at this moment. However, where am I headed? Okay. Let's focus on that and move forward. So definitely clarity um, was a big piece of it. Gratitude was huge, uh, huge in the sense of that all these incredible people, even though they were going through some really tough times, they found something to be grateful for. They hung on to that because as we know, gratitude shifts your perspective. So it doesn't minimize what you're going through at the end of it. There's some tough stuff that people go through in life in general. And so gratitude doesn't minimize it. It just allows you to shift that perspective for a moment. And sometimes that's all you need to shift for a second to refocus. And so gratitude was such a huge piece in it. And so uh, they're all grateful for the lessons that they learned even in the tough stuff. What could they learn from it? And the other part is perspective at the end as well as like, how can they realize that in that situation, there's something that they need to learn from it. So they didn't have a, you know, they get the end of the day, we're all human. So there's going to be some human emotions that'll be like, oh, frustration and this and that. That being said, they were able to have gratitude for what they were going through. They were able to reframe it from a perspective standpoint of like, what can I learn from this to help me? And then again, they had clarity to move forward. And so um, those would be three things that for sure, all the, all the incredible contributors share. I want to talk about gratitude for a minute. So being grateful for the crappy stuff, nine and a half years ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer that turned into metastatic Mm -hmm. breast cancer. So for for nine and a half years, I've been in chemo treatment, right? Cancer treatment. And so 
some people could say, well, that's really crappy. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm going to be in cancer treatment for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Um, And some people can think, well, that, you know, I'm sorry, Candace, that's a horrible thing, but I'm grateful for it. Mm -hmm. I learned at the beginning in the, in the beginning, the early years, how people, how much people valued me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had a group of people who were carrying around pictures of me at a convention and Mm -hmm. taking selfies with my picture at, with different people. And they were posting on the Facebook and I'm sitting in, you know, in bed and all these pictures are popping up with me being tagged in them. And there are people, you know, just taking a selfie Mm -hmm. with my photo. Right. Yep. I mean, that was, I think one of them was with you. <laughs> yeah, there was, I was there. I, I was mean, there. there, how can, how can I not be grateful for that? Yeah. You know, yeah. and that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't been diagnosed with cancer mm-hmm. and, you know, and I, I launched my coaching business because I was like, I've been, people have been telling me for years that I should be a business coach. Well, I've been diagnosed with cancer. Now's a great time to launch a coaching business, you know, you incredible. You but I know incredible. while I can. <laughs> You are incredible. And I just, all of the blessings that have come into my life because of this cancer diagnosis. And I'm freaking grateful for being here nine and a half years later. Mm-hmm. Right. And the man who developed the drug that's keeping me alive. Holy moly. How can mm-hmm. I not be grateful for him? And Revlon who financed the research that went into mm-hmm. this drug. How can I not be thankful for Revlon? Right. Mm-hmm. So there's just so even in the hard, dark times, mm-hmm. there is something to be grateful for. And there is, there is. And the fact that was, you just shared right there and everything that you share. And you're just like such an amazing person. And this is why you're one of my favorite people (laughs) because you just shared perspective, right? Like, yeah. Is it, you know, you're focusing and choosing to focus on the incredible things that have happened as a result of this. Right. And there's, and we always have choices. I was literally on a call earlier this morning with a friend of mine, we were talking about that because it is about your perspective. And sometimes you need someone that can shift, help you shift your perspective. If you're not able to do it on your own, find great people to be around because, you know, you can have two situations and I was sharing this with a friend. I guess I'm um, come, dealing with an injury myself right now. Um, and uh, I'm, so I've been, you know, going through treatments and different things to get it better. And in one treatment session I went to, I left and I was just so down because the practitioner was like, oh my gosh, and what are we going to do? And this and this, and it was all this like, energy of uncertainty and just like, there's going to be a long time to get back to where you were and all this stuff. And I was like, ah, and I started spiraling a little bit in that. And then I had another treatment with another practitioner and they're like, we got this. We're good. It's going to take about, you know, five to 10 weeks and then da, 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 da. And you know, it's going to be painful while we go through it. However, at the end. And so, and I left and I was like, okay, cool. And I share that because again, perspective of who are you around? Like choose the people that you have in your circle very carefully. Mm -hmm. Choose who, when you're going through tough stuff, you reach out to very carefully because in that I'm a very upbeat, very positive person. I've done a lot of personal development. And even in that moment, I had a quick, like, what do you mean? It's going to take a year of like, I have stuff I want to do, you know? And so then in another environment, oh, we're good. We got this. And so I just want to encourage people who are you surrounding yourself? Listen to this podcast because you just heard how Candace, her perspective and all the things she's grateful for. And one thing that I started doing years ago, just to help me with like focusing on gratitude is every single day at 9, 10 PM Pacific, a reminder a calendar invite goes off on my phone and it just says, I'm so happy and grateful that, and that's, I just take that moment. So 9, 10 PM, every single pops up. I have a quick minute. What am I grateful for? I just close my eyes. What am I grateful for? If I'm driving, it goes off. Obviously I don't close my eyes, but I'm like, what am I grateful for? You know, because again, it's so easy to go through the day and yes, we're all grateful people and we have a lot to be thankful for. And sometimes we're just not as intentional. So I did started doing that. So I was always going to be intentional at least once in the day. I do start in the morning and before I go to bed. However, it was just another time where I just pause in that moment. And I found that to be really helpful. So for those of you listening, Set a calendar, remind, it's set an event in your calendar for yourself, whatever it, time works for you. Do you do it at 9, 10 in the morning or 9, 10 at night? Oh, sorry, 9, 10 PM. PM. So yeah. I had for almost a year, 12, 1, 12, 35, 1, 2, 3, no, 12, 34. At mm. 1234, the alarm would go off and I would say five things for which I'm grateful, but it. It, it kept going off in the middle of coaching sessions. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you got to choose when you know you'll you'll most likely have some time. So that's why I went with the evening time. I love 910 though. 910. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, didn't even, I just got yeah. that when you said one, two, three, four, and I have 910. Yeah. Didn't yeah. even think about yeah. that. Yeah, 910. <laughs> I, I don't, I, 11 things I'm grateful for. I mean, or 910, just one thing I'm grateful for. I love, mm-hmm. I love, I'm going to change my calendar, my, uh, Yay. my appointment in my calendar. Cause it was disrupting <laughs> coaching sessions. Mm-hmm. And the first time it disrupts a session, you know, everybody's happy about it. Cause they want to do their thing. And then the next the rest of the time I'm like, oh crap, you know? So, yeah. um, and then you don't get a chance to actually do it. So that's why I kind of 910. Cause for the most, most of the time, unless I'm out, even if I'm out, it pops up and I can do it quickly or later when I get home or whatever the case may be. But it just, for the most part, yeah, you want to pick a time when you, you're not in your typical flow of stuff, if you will. I love that. I loved the one, two, three, four, five things I'm grateful for. It was a great, um, I can't, I can't take credit for it. It was, uh, Anthony Paponi who came up with this idea. I can't take credit for it, but, um, I love, I love, I love the nine, 10. I'll have to figure out what the best time for me is. I think no, everyone but, has to pick their own time. Yeah, yeah pick but their I'm, own time. But I'm going to read, I'm going to, starting today, I'm going to reinvigorate that habit because yes, it was really it. cool to do it every day. And then I turned the alarm off and I, it's been several weeks. I recently had a podcast interview with Leonard Shiner and we were talking about how people like to commiserate and that there are certain kinds of people that you call to complain to. And then there's people that you never call to complain to because they're not going to let you complain. And I think the resilience piece here is that Phoebe and I are not the person you call to complain to. Mm -mm. And if you do, I'm going to, we're going to give you, I I give some time. So I get it. You know, sometimes people need to vent. So here's my thing though. If someone calls me to complain and I realize this in building my network marketing business, because I would get sucked into, because I'm the person I just like an hour later, because I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. And I, I feel an for hour. So, I couldn't do it. Not for it an hour. Ter- no, 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 not anymore. <laughs> so now I'm like, okay, you want to vent? You're frustrated. I understand. You get two minutes. Do I have permission to start the timer right now? Yes. Great. Hit time. Go and, hard and for five. Agree. Yeah, exactly. We agree. After those two minutes, though, then you you vent because sometimes you do need to just get it out, right? At mm-hmm. the end of the day, we're human. I I need it sometimes too, where I just want to have a like, give me two minutes. And I'll say that to friends, just two minutes. Sometimes it's one. So yeah, but we're not the people who were, you know, and I had to learn that the hard way because in the beginning, especially of building network marketing, I just wanted to help everyone. And I still do. I want to help. What I had to learn though is you got to help people, give them the tools so they can help themselves. Yeah. Because some people do just want to sit in that, as you said, sit in that energy and that's going to suck all of us down. So no, we're going to put a hard line stop to it. You, and call me if you want to salute, like we're going to work through a solution and get you on the other side. If you just want to sit in it. Yeah. I'm not the person. (laughs) I'm not the person. I love it. Okay. So since, since you are a network marketer, I would love for you to share three things that you would do today because I know you're not going to do this because you're very happy where you are, but what are three things that you would do today if you were starting over in network marketing? Three things I would do today. I would figure out my story. Your story has so much power. Your story is, it's your story and no one else is going to have your story. Your story will connect, especially if you tell it straight from the heart, master it in a way though, that it's not a long story. It's got to be something that you can, you know, get your message across quickly, master your story. That would be number one. I would make a list of my, what I call my board of directors. So these are my people who, if if I'm starting a network marketing business, traditional business, writing a book, who are those 12 people, 12 to 24 people who are sharp, they're ambitious, they're driven, they can build this better than I can. They are incredible people who I have a relationship with. I want to say that again, who I have a relationship with. Because there's amazing, like I could line up an incredible board of director team, but if I don't know them, for me to just reach out and pitch them something. No, I want to, I want the board of directors, the people who I know I trust, I've built a relationship with those 12 to 24 people are people I'm going to just, I, because I have a relationship with them. I'm just going to reach out to them. Hey, Candace, this may or may not be for you, but I have something and this is what's happened for me. And can I just share it with you? You have full permission if it's not for you to close up, but I was working on the board of directors, people who I admire, who I look up to, who I trust. You are one of those people. And I would just love it if you look at it again, may not be for you, but you may know someone who it could be a fit for. And I just respect you. And then I'd set up an appointment again, because we have that relationship and that trust. Most people will give you 15, 30 minutes, if you will. Right. So I would do that. So I work on my story. I'd have my board of directors and I'd start sharing it with them. 
And my third thing I would do, and this is more of a training point for, I want people to realize with the board of directors, because everyone will either become a, they'll either become a customer of yours, they'll become a distributor, a partner, whatever you want to call it. Or if you build your business the right way, they will become a referral source for you, right? So they may never join you, but they may be someone who knows someone who will, right? So that's why you want to go in with approach of respect that person. Uh, the third thing I would do, 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 I'd get busy. I'd start carving out time in my schedule. I'd be like, okay, what do I want to accomplish? How much time I'd be consistent. And I'd just get to work with sharing I, it and following up. You'd go hard for five as many times as that. As Absolutely. You needed to. Yep. Success I, loves speed. Success loves speed. So that's right. Go for it. That's right. But also the speed and timing kind of go together too. Because sometimes mm-hmm. you can go really, really fast and nothing can happen. And then all of a sudden, six weeks later, you're like, whoa. And then you realize, oh, it's because I was going fast. Absolutely. All of this, these results now are because I did that. Mm-hmm. I you say, and if you want to celebrate the harvest, you have to celebrate planting the seed. So you want to get those big results. You have to start with planting the seed, right? You have to get that in there. If you want to be able to harvest, you got to plant lots of seeds, right? And realize you got to nurture it. You got to follow up. You got to share your story and then you will get that harvest, but it does take time. Everything has a season. I love that you started with tell your story. Cause that is, um, I, I recently found my sparkle in a new network marketing company and my team members that are coming to me saying, why are you doing so well? I'm having trouble. I just said, how many times have you told your story? How many times have you told your story? Tell your story to me. Okay. Now here are some things you can do to make that story just a little bit better. You know, and there's a storytelling formula that I learned from Kendra Hall, who wrote the book Stories That Stick, normal, explosion, new normal. And you can tell that story in 30 seconds. This is how I used to feel. And then I did this. And now I feel like this. And you can tell that story so quickly. You just need to tell the story enough times to the right people. Absolutely. And you have to have your story. Like that's the biggest thing. It's like people connect that energy, that heart centeredness. So it's like, if you don't have a story with your, whatever you're doing, that's going to be very challenging, right? That's why you Mm -hmm. have to have your own story. And if you don't, you need to create it. You can borrow other people's stories for sure. While you're creating your own, that being said, you do want to have your own story. Why are you representing what you represent? People can sense it. If you're just like, "Eh, well, they're going to be like, whatever. But because you, Candace, had an incredible result from what you're doing, people yeah. sense that. They lean into that. That attracts them to you to want to know more. Exactly. So many years ago, before I met you many years ago, I did a a woman did a sales presentation with me about a product. And I asked her, well, what have your results been? And her answer was, I can't afford this product. So she was trying to sell something that she wasn't using. See? That's not, no, that's not yeah. inspiring. That doesn't make someone lean in. <laughs> and even if you're working on that, you could be on it, but you better have some stories. Like the fact that that was the answer. It's like, does anyone have a story with this product? Like what, what is going on there? Right? Like yeah. that. Interesting. It, it was, it was, how did just, you feel? <laughs> I was like, well, I'm not, I didn't, I didn't end up buying it. I mean, if she didn't have enough belief in it that she could carve out a little bit of money to buy it for herself to see if it actually worked. Why, why should mm-hmm. I, right? Absolutely. Why should Absolutely. I? And it actually changed my opinion of her a little bit. Um, I hate to say it, but the, the authenticity wasn't there. She mm. sounds something that she didn't believe in. Yeah. You yeah. know, interesting. Okay. Oh, oh it's, we need to wrap up. Oh. Okay. We, we talked about marketing your book a little bit, but in, in your past, you know, 17 years as a, as a business person, what has become your favorite marketing tool, tip, or technique? My favorite marketing tool, tip, or technique would be kind of, we've actually chatted a little bit about it is reach out to people every single day. Just reach out to like set a goal. It may be one, it may be three, it might be 10. You decide, right? Everyone has their own thing. Uh, For me, minimum one person every single day, I'm just going to reach out in some reason. It might be a video message. I do crazy happy birthday songs. So sometimes I do that. Sometimes it's a text, sometimes it's cards, sometimes a letter, like just every single day, reach out to someone, let them know, Hey, you know what? Just think about you. Hope you're doing well. Want to put a smile on your face. Here's a crazy video, right? It doesn't have to be you on video. If someone's not feeling like that, you can send them something. If you see an article you think would they'd like, send it to them. Take a picture of it, send it to them. If you, you read a book that you, they might like, send it to them. Just every day, look for someone you can pour into and add value to. 
And I, I truly believe that will serve you in the long run in whatever you do it, because it's, again, it's just about connecting with people and people who feel appreciated, appreciate. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it just makes the world a better place, right? At the end of the day, like we have so much when we reach out and I say this, like we can, we create such a ripple effect. We don't even know that how much we impact people, just that smile, pay for someone's coffee, send a note, whatever it is, the text, the video message, it, it changes that person, right? That energy. Cause think about when you get a message from someone, I mean, I get messages and I'm like, Oh, so sweet. Just the other day, I got a message. Yesterday, a, a guy that I networked with reached out with a message, and we haven't talked in a while. And I just was like, oh, it felt so good. It just in that moment, right? And so this is what happens. We do something like that, we feel great. The person on the other end feels great, and all the people that person touches after that moment, because you've shifted and leaned into that energy they're going to start to feel like it just changes. And we don't see how that ripple effect, um, we don't see it end. And that's, what's so beautiful about it. So that would be my suggestion. Just reach out to someone, love on someone. I have a personal example that involves you and me. So mm -hmm. I saw that you released a book mm -hmm. and I was like, I wonder if she's doing the podcast circuit. Cause I know podcasters who would be, she would be an awesome guest for. And it was just that because I acted on that and mm -hmm. I was like, well, oh, heck yeah. I want to interview her too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just that little, just that little thing. And I could have, I could have just said, oh, I'll do it later. But I did it right then and there. I thought, oh, Phoebe just launched a book. Let mm -hmm. me send her a message, right? Let me and support it just brought her. a smile to my face, right? Like, cause again, I just adore you and you taking that moment to just say like, Hey, congratulations. Can we hop on a podcast? Hey, are you doing this? Here's an idea. Like that has created such a ripple because I, I responded, obviously, obviously we're doing this now. And also you connected with a couple of people. I went on that tool that you shared with me to, to where I can connect with other people. And now, you know, I've met all these amazing people, but had you not done that, and take an action. That's the key. You took action. There's so many things that wouldn't have happened. And we don't even know where that ripple, you know, I've connected with people in India and Spain and all over that they're going to hear a message that might change their day. It might yeah. change their life. Like, so all because you took action and I'll never know. You'll never know. And that's okay because I'll be the receiving end of a different ripple. Absolutely. That's the law of reciprocity. Absolutely. I actually Beautiful. like the law of reciprocity more than the law of attraction because the law of reciprocity happens and you never know when you're going to get on the receiving end of that ripple. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. Uh, this is my favorite part of the interview, but it's also, I'm sad because I don't want it to be over. <laughs> I know me neither, <laughs> but we'll, we'll do part two. We'll do part two. Yes, so absolutely. Many more, many more conversations. Yes. Any opportunity I have to talk to you, I will take. Phoebe Trotman, this is your moment of gratitude. For whom or what are you most grateful? I am most grateful for health. I am just grateful for the, the fact that we're here today, that we're able to both open our eyes and connect and just grateful for you, my dear friend, and just your perspective on everything that you're going through that has changed my life and so many other people. Thanks for tuning in to Gratitude Geek, the relationship marketing podcast for micropreneurs building genuine lasting relationships with clients, colleagues, and community. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on Audible, iTunes, Good Pods, or your preferred podcast player. Our theme music is Track 14 by Rev Brock and Soul Lily. Make sure to visit gratitudegeek.com for the show notes, where you can find links to all the groovy resources we've mentioned, including ways to connect with our guest, Phoebe Trotman. I've been your host, Candice Rodarty. Stay groovy, my friends. Stay groovy. I know we can make it.